start? Well, good morning to uh, Coach's Corner here on this first Saturday in December. Can it really be December? You look outside, uh, there are hardly any uh, snow on the ground. The temperatures, uh, I would say, very mild, maybe even warm for this time of the year. But let's enjoy it. Let us not complain about it. Let's uh, enjoy the 25-degree morning in the... Uh, the, the beautiful December weather. Let's uh, let's talk about last night. Let's start with the game heard on K104 and online at rjbroadcasting.com. It was game one of two for these two teams uh, this season in the border battle for girls hockey as the Muskies hosted the Broncos. Both teams came into the game with just one loss on the season. It was in a very even first period as the Broncos outshot the Muskies 13-9. But C.C. Hayes of Fort Francis got the only goal of the period on, a, on the power play unassisted. The Muskies took six penalties in the first two periods, but the Falls were unable to take advantage of that uh, aspect. However, the Muskies would score shorthanded twice in the second period. Uh, Kaylee Degagne would get the first one. Hayes would get the other one, uh, both of them unassisted, and they would build a 3-0 lead after 34 periods. A lot of that lead had to do with uh, Fort goaltender Cameron Sandalovich as she had 25 saves in the second period alone. The Broncos absolutely made things happen in that second period. Just couldn't put one past Sandalovich. The Broncos' comeback in the third period was kind of slowed by the fact that they took some penalties in the uh, first part of the third period. But Morgan Rasmussen would ram home a rebound with 2.16 remaining on the power play. Matter of fact, it was a 6-on-4 power play as the uh, net was empty for the Broncos. But that would be all the scoring as Fort Francis defeats I Falls 3-1. to one. Sandalovich ended the game with 49 saves. Grace Wagner and Macy Marcotte, they split the goaltending two. He's just about right down the middle. There was a whistle just past the half point, uh, halfway point of the game. They combined for 38 saves. The Broncos are at home against Hibbing Chisholm on Tuesday. The Muskies are at home hosting Warwood on Tuesday as well. The Bronco Boys basketball team opened their 2017-18 season with a road game in Bemidji. The Falls held close for the first oh, 10, maybe 12 minutes of the game, uh, trailing 22 to 11 with about uh, eight minutes to go. But Bemidji would open up the game before halftime and they led 49 to 26. The Broncos would score just nine points in the second half and they would lose by a final of 83 to 35. Armando Barrios led the Broncos with 12 points. Wyatt Broughton had seven. The boys have their home opener on Tuesday night against Chisholm and we will be there and you can hear the pregame starting right around seven o'clock on K104 and online at RJ Broughton. Broadcasting.com. The LBF girls basketball team was down in Deer River for their second road game of the week as they were uh, in Deer River to face the uh, Warriors. LBF trailed 29 to 9 at half and lost by a final score of 59 to 18. Emily Franz and Danielle Pekarski each had five points to lead the Vikings, and Emily Fairchild added four. The first place Thief River Norskies came to uh, Ice for Kids Arena last night for an SIJHL tilt. The visitors would score three times in the first period. They'd get the only three goals of the first period, and they defeated the Lakers by a final of 7-3. to three. Carter Chorney, Jaden uh, Ness, and Ian Jarvis would score the goals for the Lakers. Fort Francis will be on the road uh, to face English River on Tuesday. Rainy River basketball teams uh, got their, uh, well can I kind of say their regular season uh, started, preseason kind of out of the way now you play the uh, southern teams uh, early here in the first part of the season and of course the northern division games start in uh, January the Rainy River uh, teams were in St. Cloud last night and it's a pair of road games as they'll be in F uh, Fergus Falls this afternoon. It was all St. Cloud in the uh, first quarter of the women's game as they led 26-14 to 14 after the first 10 minutes and then 44 to 30 at half. However, the Voyagers started the comeback in the third. They outscored St. Cloud 20 to 10 in the third. They'd also outscore St. Cloud in the fourth quarter, but they'd come up just one point short as they lost 73 to 72. Daya Monroe led the uh, Rainy River with 23 points. Valon Mobley 20, and Miosha Peterson had 14. Again, the women are in Fergus Falls for a one o'clock game this afternoon with the Spartans. Of course, the men were also in St. Cloud last night, and their game was uh, just as close as the women's. The Voyagers lose by a final of 98 to 91. Rainy River shot 57% from the field in the game. That's just absolutely outstanding. However, St. Cloud shot 59%, and they just could not overcome that. Uh, Jean-Paul uh, Jean Shafino had 19. Kevin Melendez also had 19 for Rainy River. Davarius Wright, 18, and Trey Jones, 11 for the four players in double figures for Rainy River. The men play at 3 o'clock this afternoon in Fergus Falls. High school games last night uh, around the area. Let's start with uh, boys basketball. 
uh, uh, Nashua Kiwaden 63-56 over Southridge McGregor 92 Northland of Reamer 58 Crosby Arrington makes a bucket at the buzzer to beat Pine River back is 67-66 Chisholm makes 14 three-pointers in their game last night they defeat Lakeview Christian 79-72 the Blue Streaks come into town on Tuesday <clears throat> Excuse me, Virginia 69-52 over Deer River. Cherry loses to Big Fork 95-31. Hibbing loses by three to Cristo Ray Jesuit out of the Twin Cities. In uh, girls basketball last night, Hibbing uh, 62, South St. Paul 37. Rozo loses to St. Francis 68-56. Proctor all over Two Harbors 61-15. Denfield 50-31 over North Lakes Academy. Virginia by four points over Barnum 58 to 54. In boys hockey last night, Duluth East ties White Bear Lake 3 to 3. Roseau loses to Centennial 6 to 2. Duluth Marshall 8 to 1 over Benilde St. Marcus. How good is Duluth Marshall? 6 1 Rochester, uh, Rochester Century defeats Proctor. Duluth Denfeld 4 to 1 over South St. Paul. Hermantown loses to Wyzetta 5 to 3. Hibbing Chisholm 4 to 1 over Chanhassen. And War Road drops a game to St. Cloud Cathedral by a score of 5 5 to 2. In girls hockey last night, 4 to 3 Bemidji over Detroit Lakes. Grand Rapids Greenway 4 to 1, better than Cambridge I Santi. Coke Esco Carlton, remember they're in the uh, Broncos section this year. They defeat Holy Family Waconia 5 to 4. Princeton, who the Broncos face, uh, the Bronco girls hockey team faces next Friday, they lose to Buffalo 5 to 2. Duluth loses to Hopkins St. Louis Park 5 to 3. Moose Lake area 4 to 1, better than Chisago Lakes and Roseau drops a 2-1 decision to Moundsview. College hockey last night, of course, um, getting uh, in their final games before their uh, holiday break in the Big Ten. Notre Dame 3-1 over Michigan State. Ohio State and Penn State tie 5-5. Penn State wins the shootout to get the extra point there. Minnesota 5-4 better than Wisconsin. And the NCHC, a rematch of the last year's national championship game. Denver 1, UMD 0. North Dakota 4-3 over Western Michigan. St. Cloud State, uh, the number two team in the nation uh, in the rankings, they score seven to better Nebraska Omaha, who had four. Bemidji State drops a decision three to one to Bowling Green. In women's hockey last night, St. Cloud State and Ohio State tie at two. Ohio State wins the uh, shootout there. Bemidji State and Minnesota go to overtime. The Gophers get the winner in overtime, win three to two, and UMD loses to Wisconsin by a score of five to one. Minnesota Timberwolves were on the road at OKC last night and uh, OKC scored 42 points in the uh, first quarter and the Wolves just had to keep trying to battle back. They got it to within three in the last minute but they lose 111-107. Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins each had 23. Jimmy Butler poured in 22. The women's uh, volleyball team from the University of Minnesota in the NCAA tournament coming in as the uh, six seed, seven seed. For some reason, my, the, it escapes me. Seven seed, I believe. They get a three-set sweep over North Dakota last night. They now face Northern Iowa for a trip to the Sweet 16. In Division II volleyball, the uh, UMD team continues their run. They came in in the uh, central region as the five seed, took down Northern State on Thursday. They take down the number one seed and the number two ranked team in the nation, Southwest Minnesota State, and they get a chance to, uh, for a chance to go to the Elite Eight against their longtime nemesis and defending national champions, Concordia State. St. Paul. What's going on today locally? Well, the Bronco Bowling Team, who we're going to hear from here in about uh, 20 minutes, they're down at the State Bowling uh, Tournament taking place in Arden Hills. That gets started at 10 o'clock. Three of uh, the Bronco wrestlers, the uh, three of them, are out in Faustin to take part in an invitational there. Mentioned that the Rainy River basketball team's in Fergus for one and three o'clock games. The Rainy River women's hockey team, they're going to be down in UMD. They're going to take a couple of forfeits this week, and they're going to play some scrimmages. They're short a couple of players, and they're going to bring a couple of players along to uh, to make uh, make things happen. So they're going to go down, and they're going to take the two forfeits, but they'll play UMD twice this weekend. And, of course, the game you're going to hear tonight on K104 and online at rjbroadcasting.com. The Bronco hockey team, the Bronco boys hockey team, will be in Virginia to take on the Blue Devils. 
Pre-game starts at 7.10, drop of the puck at 7.30. Of course, it's a big day in college football. There's conference championships galore. Last night, uh, things got started with the Pac-12 championship, and USC uh, just gets the better of Stanford by a score of 31-28. to Of course, the big games today with the chance to go to the championship uh, playoffs are in the balance. Number three, Oklahoma takes on number 11, TCU. In the Big 12 championship game, that game starts at 11.30 on Fox. The SEC championship. Championship. I'm sure with the winner between Georgia and Auburn heading to the uh, Final Four. That game's at 3 o'clock on CBS. Clemson, number one. Miami, number seven. Theoretically, the winner heading also to the playoffs. That game's at 7 o'clock tonight on ABC. And the Big Ten Championship. Wisconsin wins. They're in. If uh, Ohio State wins, well, we'll have to wait and see what happens. That game starts at 7 o'clock on Fox as well. And the uh, NCAA, other NCAA football divisions in uh, the FCS division number two North Dakota State they host San Diego at 2:30. South Dakota, uh, yeah, South Dakota State takes on Northern Iowa at two o'clock, and South Dakota they are in uh, Texas to take on San Houston State that game also at two o'clock. In Division Two, Mankato State is at uh, host Texas A&M Commerce. As uh, I was thinking that for some reason they were heading to Central Washington, but they are playing at home against Texas A&M Commerce. That game's at noon, and St. Thomas is down in. Texas. They're facing Mary Harden Baylor, the defending uh, Division Three national champions. That game is at noon as well. UMD football, they get an extra game. They are playing in the Mineral Water Bowl against Central Missouri. Uh, that game is this afternoon. The Wild host St. Louis at 5 o'clock looking for a little redemption from uh, last uh, earlier this week. The the uh, poor effort that they played against St. Louis, I guess, late last week. Tomorrow, as I mentioned, the Rainy River women's hockey team will be down at UMD for a 9.30 scrimmage. The Vikings are in Atlanta to uh, take on the Falcons. That game is at noon. Pre-game starts at 11 o'clock on your home for the Minnesota Vikings, K104. Timberwolves host the LA Clippers tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Go for men's basketball. They're on uh, 5 o'clock on BTN tomorrow afternoon. That game is uh, the opener in the Big Ten as they take on Rutgers. The go for women's basketball team, they are at home at 1 o'clock taking on Eastern Michigan. Former Broncos, let's uh, finish up our first segment with that. Claire Palm and Lexi Graves and Casey Myers, of course, uh, with the Rainy River women's hockey team, will be down at UMD. Amy Oren last night was in Superior. They lose 3-1 to one in that game as uh, Amy had the assist on the only goal for River Falls. Lexi Edwards, uh, earlier last week, uh, excuse me, about a week and a half ago, she scored her first two collegiate goals in a 10-0 win, and uh, last night uh, Sacred Heart wins by a score of 6-0 over Becker. Lucas DeBenedict with the Northland men's hockey team had a goal and assist in Tuesday's 3-3 tie with UWS. Last night he absolutely exploded in a 9-3 win over Trine. He had a hat trick and an assist. They are in uh, Michigan this afternoon to take on Adrian. Abby Koshik with the Moorhead State women's swimming team. Uh, she took a third place in the 100 backstroke in their big invitational that's going on out in uh, Moorhead this weekend. And uh, that's going to end our first segment here. We're going to take a break and we're going to come back and we're going to talk to my favorite girls basketball players. So stay tuned for that. Don't, uh, don't, don't go away. You're listening to Coach's Corner live from Hardy's on K104 and online at rjbroadcasting.com. Excellent. And welcome back to Coach's Corner, everybody. We're bantering during the uh, commercial break here about referees and my judgment, harsh or too harsh, uh, too heavy or not. We're going to talk girls basketball, head coach Jay Boyle, and as I mentioned, my two favorite girl basketball players, uh, and I'm sure you stuck around just for that to find out who those those are, Jenna Sullivan and Janet Humbert. And uh, I, I, I probably should admit that I, I think I called Janet Jenna at least once during the game the other night, and I think Jana, Jenna got a Janet just once during the game the other night. Oh, uh, that's okay. way better than what I do on a constant <laughs> basis. I just call them both Janet. So. Janet? That's pretty much what comes Janet? out of my mouth most well, of the time. It, 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 you know, I'm not saying that they're that they look the same or that they play the same. It's just, I don't know what it is. I can't we get like to yell at them a lot. <laughs> wow, that's, yeah, that goes without saying, I think, sometimes. Because they, they know we know they need it, Mr. Boyle. There you go. There you go. Well, let's talk about uh, Thursday night's game, a 76-41 uh, win over the uh, Golden Bears. Who came to town, and uh, maybe, maybe I can say it this way, Coach Boyle, maybe a little bit in rebuilding mode. 
Oh uh, yeah, I would definitely. I thought you were talking about ups for a second. No, no, no. Yes, no. Avalet's definitely in rebuilding mode. They do have some, uh, you know, those two big play, those two bigs they have that are sophomores and juniors now are pretty well rounded players. But they lost a ton last year, losing uh, Perushek and the older Delich. So yeah, Avalet has a lot of rebuilding to do. We were able to get the sweep over them seven eight. A barn burner JV game. I saw you called it, and uh, and the varsity game. So uh, it, it was it was a barn burner, and I uh, I I was I was very afraid we were going to go to overtime. We were already <laughs> late, and then I thought overtime for sure was going to come. And uh, anyway, we, we got out of it, and and of course we you, you talked about the couple bigs from Evelyn Gilbert. Uh, Avery Strader showed that uh, she could make free throws. Uh, we we couldn't get we couldn't get Jenna to go straight up. In the game, and so at least well, in the ref side. At least in the ref size, Jenna. Let's let's talk about it. We, I, I, I talked to Coach Boyle during the pregame when I interviewed him. I said, when these senior girls were sophomores, fouls are plenty. I said, I think last year it got better. I said, what's going to be the anticipation for this year? And he said, I think they are going to continue to improve. And after the first half, I thought we were going to be right that that there was going to be. But then in the second half, it became. A foul fest, and so Jenna, uh, t- t- talk about the straight up because you're working your you're, you're working your tail off at it, right? Uh, yeah, it's a very 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 slow progress. Uh, <laughs> I think I've I always try to go straight up, and then it's like, hey, you dipped your hand, and it's like, you know, you're probably right, but at the time, I don't think it happened. So, so coach, have you come up with a drill? Maybe you should have her go throw her hands up against the wall. And, and, well, and, and, an and, 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 and we don't want her to break her wrist, right. but but maybe you know uh, something to do that. I, like I said, it, it's very difficult. And and as you mentioned during the pregame interview, that they, they've kind of laxed the. I would say maybe made it easier for defensive players to be in their vertical plane. And, and well, I I think that's the way it's it's always been. I think they're just doing a, a different interpretation of it. Exactly. I, I think you know I told you it's one of the points of emphasis there this year how they're going to interpret that rule, and it'll be interesting to see how it evolves in what the refs actually call um, so I think we saw it you know one time for sure on the uh, the block that Emma got that we all thought uh, she was going to take a charge on um, you know but when the ref and I talked about it, it was an interpretation of the rule I thought the rule could have been interpreted a little differently on some of the other calls that he made when it was going to be interpreted that way. But uh, overall, I'm not complaining how the uh, refing went, just a conversation for us here. So. Absolutely, Janet. Uh, the, you guys cr- kind of cruised out, got started with the three-pointer by Grace right away, built an 8 nothing lead, got a timeout by uh, Evelyn Gilbert, and you guys just kept expanding on that lead. What was going so well for for the Broncos in that first half on Thursday night? You know, I think we expected jitters, but we really came out confident and we really played our game, which I thought was great. So, Okay, so the game, I think, for the last few years has been up-tempo, up-tempo. Do, do, do you guys feel like that was the tempo that you guys played at on Thursday night? Did, that, that That's what happened in that game, Janet, that you guys maybe were able to maybe run Evelyn Gilbert out of the building a little bit, so to speak? Yeah, I would say that. Uh, I think we just like came out really well with a lot of energy, so that was great. It, does the does the offense start from the defense, or does the defense start because of the offense because you guys were making so many baskets in the first half, Jenna? It felt to me like you guys were able to get your defense set up in the at the th- half court line when you guys were trying to do that. Also, back when you guys were just playing back in the half court. Uh, I think it definitely it just however you start out, it always just progresses like we started out good with offense and so it was just like all right let's play defense and it was just great from that we've really been stressing defense at practice so I think it just is all coming together this is a team that uh, as we mentioned you guys have been well you're old okay let's just put it that way you guys are old you guys are seniors now girls talked about it okay, you guys have the girls gotten together and kind of said this is this is this is what we're going to do this is what we want to get done this year I'll let either one of you take a, a stab at that. I think it's something on all of our mind, but I don't think we want to say it to jinx it. <laughs> They're big on the jinxing. They're big on the jinx. Well, and I, I, I get it. You, 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 you talk about those kinds of things. So let's talk about the teams that are out there that that, that, that we're thinking about that, that are going to be sitting there, maybe final four teams that in the Section 7 to 8, because I want to hear what you guys are thinking. Who, who's out there, Janet? Who who who's the who's are the teams in Section Seven Two A that we we, we got to come to? We got to get. I think Virginia is a tough team to beat. Um, and that game's only a week away at uh, at home next Saturday. 
Esco is another good one, I'm so not, you know we just have to I'm not just going to give you the big answer because I don't think you guys know yet. Not going to rule out Proctor either. They were pretty tough last That's year. That's a good one. And how about Duluth Denver? We've seen uh, Duluth Marshall. Marshall. Duluth Excuse Marshall. Me. So, so there's there, there there there's a lot of competition out there, and I know you guys. You must play Proctor on the road this year in January. Uh, no, it's actually up here by a weird scheduling thing on their end. They're coming up again. Oh, well, I hope that I'm not running the scoreboard that night because I don't want to get yelled at again. Well, of course, the new, they're new coaches. That is, uh, it's uh, a new coach this year. New, new coaches this year, so I maybe not have to worry about. Yeah, you know, I kind of forgot to start the clock in the last eight seconds of a very close game. It, it happens, right? The, those, those, kind, those kind of things. Shh, shh, don't tell anybody. I, I didn't do it on purpose. I swear to. So what, what do you guys want to get done here? Maybe maybe break the season up, Jenna, into a, a, a few parts. You guys will have maybe the part before Christmas, then you guys will have the part after Christmas and the playoffs. What do you guys want to get done in your eyes to uh, maybe before the Christmas break? Uh, I think before Christmas, we just got to keep getting faster and keep improving because these teams always seem to progress throughout the season. And it's like some teams that we beat in the beginning of the season when it comes playoff time, it's closer games. So I think we just need to keep improving. So, so what I hear you saying is that you want Coach Boyle to put more running into the practices. That's by, by getting faster, you want him to put more running into practice. It was inferred. <laughs> That, that it needs to happen. It, what, you know, Coach Radio talked about this during the pregame. I know you guys didn't hear, hear any part of that interview, but he talked about everybody knows what you guys are going to do. And we should be able to know that what they're going to do, and we should be able to stop it. Is, is Janet, is the execution, because you guys have had this experience, is that why you guys are able to let everybody know what's happening and still score and do the things that you do? You know, I think we just come out and play our game, and um, that's a tough question. Um, I have to say, we just go out there, even though people know what we're gonna do. I think we got new plays this year, which is great. So I think we'll catch them on their heels. Wait a minute, now, I, did, did I see any new plays on Thursday night, Coach? Did, 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 you, did you, you? You saw the start of some poor execution <laughs> of some new plays on Thursday. So they were kind of there, but uh, but yeah, there are some new things in the mix that are developing well at practice. They're going to take another game or two uh, to to you know to work out the wrinkles to look as good as the stuff that we've been running for five six years. But there are some new wrinkles going in this year. So let's talk about a little bit about the, about that because you, you, obviously you want to keep things a little fresh but you got to run some of your old stuff uh I, I know one play and i don't even know if it, it was one of the plays but one play that sticks out in particular in my mind was uh, grace gilbert the other night uh it would have been in the first half because it was down on, on my right side and and uh, i think like all the rest of the bronco players are like on one one side of the floor and she did a heck of a a, a z cut and then got on a backdoor cut and, and got wide open and, and i'm pretty and, sure that's the play where grace ended up in the post position and didn't totally what she wasn't supposed ah, to do. So she made something happen out of nothing. Is what exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. It was a great cut. She didn't know what she was supposed to do, so she just did what she thought was right, and it was great. <laughs> so from the ashes rose a phoenix. Exactly. It looked great. That's exactly what's supposed to happen. Uh, so uh, coming up this week, uh, help me out. Where am I at? What am I missing? Monday, Chisholm. Yep. On the road Monday to Chisholm, on the road Thursday to Ely, and then big, uh, big IRC game, Virginia coming up on Saturday. Then it gets, uh, then we got another good week coming up with Big Fork Tuesday. We got to go to Big Fork, and Aiken coming up. Um, I believe Friday. it's on Friday. Got that game on the radio. That's why uh, I know that one. Um, of course, you guys owe Chisholm a little payback from last year. We won't talk anymore about that. Uh, but let, let, let's let's talk about uh, later in the week. Uh, with uh, Ely on, on Thursday. What do you know about Ely, Coach? Well, first year playing him. Uh, last, last year was our first year playing him in a while, so uh, we came out and we, play, we played well that game, and I was very happy this year. I thought our first game went a lot better than it did last year, um, especially when I looked at the turnovers. I was pretty happy. I, it was still up in the... I think we had like 15 in the game, but um, 
it was spread out among everyone at least. There wasn't a player that had too many. Every, everyone that had a turnover had one or two turnovers. So I thought we played pretty strong, especially compared to our first game last year. And over these next two games before we play Virginia, I'm just hoping that uh, we can keep that up, keep working on uh, the rotations, trying to rotate a few more girls in this year, just so trying to figure out how that's all going to fit in, keep on working on the new plays that we want to get in and be ready for next Saturday. Obviously, Saturday is a big game, Jenna. What's the what do you feel like maybe is the key? And I I know there's a few game, couple games in between here and there, but what's the key against Virginia? Because they are they are sitting out there as as a, as a big game. We have to have the big girl. And what do you do? Well, straight up. <laughs> that, that was that's the answer. That I might just, be a thing, yeah. Well, straight up or in that plane of verticality this year, we'll see how the how the refing crew interprets that but uh, she is a big girl that can jump out of the gym so yeah but but again uh, she's one and you guys have like I said have seen Lexi Aarons we might as well bring her name up here as long as we're talking about her going to North Dakota to play volleyball blah 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 but obviously she's only one player if they're that good they've got to have somebody else who else is out there Janet well they have this other girl that scored 22 uh I believe it was last night or the night before, and I'll be honest, i got to figure out who the heck she is because I'm not really sure. Oh, Janet, come on, give me give me the scouting report. Ooh. I'm not sure who that be. I don't know this girl. Uh-oh, they, got, they, they brought in a recruit? I don't, I, like I said, I don't know. We have an opportunity maybe next Tuesday to get a look at them, so that might be our... Uh, a little, a, little, scouting going a, a, a little scouting trip going on. Yeah, it might be happening. Yeah. Might have to be when, happening. I, when I looked at that box score, it might be happening. Coach Jay Boyle, Jenna Sullivan, and Janet Hubbard joining me here. We'll uh, take a break, and we'll come back with the interview I taped with the Bronco Bowling team a couple of days ago. You're listening to Coach's Corner live from Hardy's on K104 and online at rjbroadcasting.com. Well, welcome back to Coach's Corner, joined by members of the Bronco Bowling team who are well, as you listen to this interview, getting ready to compete in the state tournament down in the uh, Twin Cities, and we'll start with the coaches, with uh, Ralph Rule and uh, Barry Miller. Guys, uh, this is getting to be a regular trip for you guys, uh, and, and a good trip, right, Ralph? Yes, it is. It's a lot of fun. Uh, seeing how much the kids have improved and, and getting to take part in something like that is, is exciting. You, you've been a part of the program, I think, since, since the beginning. What, what, what have you seen that the kids have improved at? most over the the years that the program has been in place uh, well uh, the most noticeable thing is is we now have a team uh, it used to be a lot of individuals uh, the kids work good together and everybody has improved across the board and it's nice to see Barry you came on I think a little bit later what, what, uh, did, were you there in the beginning with John and, and Ralph when it all got started or, or were you were behind more behind the scenes and and, and then nobody uh, told me about that uh, that was behind the scenes like that. Last year I came out and coached him when John was unavailable and uh, and Ralph and I have uh, decided to, to really make this a, a, a full-time thing for these guys. Is it, I was thinking about this today and thinking about this. When, when you get to this point now when, when it's kind of the, 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 the icing on top of the cake, does it become more of a physical or a mental setup for these kids as they go into the state tournament uh, on Saturday? It's going to be a real mental state to get into it. They, they know all the necessary needs to do what they have to do. The hard part is when you're competing and you're going to have 144 other people competing right beside you, and then you're going to have a huge crowd cheering other people on and, and of course, RT on too. It makes it a, a whole di different atmosphere. Sammy Maxwell, this is uh, second year to get to go to state. You got to compete last weekend, I believe, right? Yep. All conference uh, tournament. So, is it getting easier with these big tournaments to go down and, and compete and, and have a chance to to do these kinds of things? Yeah, it's getting easier to go into a house with, like Ralph said or Barry, with 144 bowlers, a ton of people watching. It's really hot compared to up here in those houses. There's too many people. There's, so you can't get them to turn on the AC? Is that what you're trying to tell me? I think they pumped the heat in there. It's winter, <laughs> man. <laughs> Talk a little bit about last weekend's experience uh, getting to, to, to bowl in the all-conference tournament. It was a cool experience. Uh, four of my, five of my friends, actually, from our conference, three of my buddies from the team. It was just a really cool experience to go down there and bowl and compete in a big tournament, big-style tournament. Christian Huffnagel, looking forward. What uh, what are you looking forward to most on Saturday with the with the team tournament here with the Bronco Bowling team? I'm actually not going on Saturday because there's something else going on in the cities for me. But I am looking forward to hearing how the team does. I think we'll do really well though, because everybody has greatly improved over the season. 
Nick Canner, you uh, are old hat at this as well, just like Sammy. What, what, what's, the, what's the attitude of, of the team going into the meet on Saturday? Uh, we just want to go in there prepared and know what's going to come for us. It's a whole new house, whole new aspect of us, so new team. Hopefully all the new kids that are going can step up and finally see what it's like. Is it is, and because you've had a chance to do this, is it is a, is it a stressful situation, or because you've been through this now, you can kind of just relax and go out there and bowl. Uh, when you did it and when you do it enough, it doesn't get as stressful. But still, just that environment, it still gets stressful on you in that situation. Logan Cole, what uh, what, what what's been the, maybe the most exciting thing that's happened for this team this year? We're getting the new student or new kids getting into it too, and. And, and who are some of these new kids uh, uh, that that you're that you're referencing? Christian Huffnagel, Melody Rule, Brianna Honberg, and Kevin Joslin. And what about Will Peterson? He he's an old hat at this. Yeah. Will, <laughs> you look kind of young to me. So, is, is this true? How old are you? What grade are you in? I am in ninth grade, and I am 14. Okay, well, that's fair enough. So, what uh, what what kind of do you feel like maybe is the is the thing that you bring to this team? Uh, is it uh, lightheartedness, good bowling? What what is it that 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 helps you be a part of this team? Smile. The smile. <laughs> so 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 you can make so you can kind of make everybody relax and, and bowl better. Most part. Most part. <laughs> what, what 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 what's the, what's the toughest shot? That you got to take care of uh, when you're bowling. The ten pin. The ten pin, just the just the ten pin by itself. Why is that? Because I hook my ball too much. So so that so that uh, well, because I don't bowl, and I, when I bowl, I don't I don't have any hook on my ball, so it maybe makes it easier. So do you try to throw it without the hook then when you're trying to take that shot out? I try to. Don't really succeed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when were you? you had a chance uh, to compete last weekend. Uh, how did it go for you? Uh, I thought it did pretty well, uh, but as a team, we bowled our hardest. Uh, we didn't do too good, but in my opinion, we did. But yeah. Do, do you use the uh, the experience from last week where things maybe didn't go as as well as planned, and use that as you go forward in, into this coming week and and maybe have a, a chance maybe to kind of, and again, I keep talking about this, but to kind of settle your nerves and say, hey, I've been here before and I can make this uh, make this a whole lot easier on myself. Yes. It's second year. I was very nervous last year. Uh, I was nervous going down to all conference. But now that I've seen how many people are going to be there, I feel like I won't be as nervous as I was last year. So, Bowling in the same place, Ralph, as the kids did last year for the state meet? Um, no. no, no. So, so does it make it easier, tougher for the kids to get in? And, and I would imagine they don't get too much practice time on the lanes. Maybe a little bit. They get five or six minutes on each lane okay. to practice. Um, but one of the things that we've worked them with uh, is when they start to practice, you find your strike ball, whatever line you have to throw, and once you have that, then you practice the two corner pins, which are, seem to give us the most trouble. So, does it get tough to? To read the lanes, are, are these are these guys? And don't take this the wrong way, anybody. Are they experienced enough? Are they talented enough to be able to read the lanes, Barry, and, and make the adjustments when things things are different for them? You know, I, I really uh, feel that our team has worked very hard this year in learning that we, we really work on the lane conditions, the oil patterns, and their adjustments that they have to make. Because every house is different. Whether we bowl here or we bowl at Grand Rapids or Hibbing. Everybody has a different oiling system, every oil pattern, and when we go down to the cities, no matter where it's at or any other tournament, it's going to be different. And if they can't adjust, they won't succeed. And even last weekend, uh, the guys from International Falls did a very good job, you know, like that. But now when we go down this weekend, when we have our whole team down there, I think they're going to do excellent. Sammy, what's the, what's the expectations for this team uh, going in? What, what, what would you consider to be... A good weekend. What would you consider to be a great weekend? Weekend, excuse me. What would you make it to say it would be superb? I would love to see this team win a couple of matches. Last year we went into the state tournament, we bowled our hearts out, and we just we came up short. But this year we're more experienced bowlers. We're throwing higher games across the board. We're throwing better scores all the time, 
and I think we'll stand a really good chance against all these teams down at the state tournament. So what? Uh, how, what is, how does the format work? Same thing as it was during the regular season the div uh, that you guys did in the division, or is it going to be some something different? It's going to use the same format where we're going to have a Baker system where we have five bowlers on the team, which we'll be able to switch in and out each, each. Every match down there, I believe, is going to be a two-game match, and we're going to bowl at least seven or eight different teams to get into the to the bracket playoffs. Okay. And so, so you got to get through round one to get to round two. So how many bowlers are you guys taking with you this weekend? Um, we'll have eight bowlers. And then you plan just to you'll bowl the five of them and kind of rotate them in and out, try to keep uh, everybody as fresh as possible and get everybody involved? Yep, everybody gets a chance to bowl. So with that kind of pressure, or not pressure, does, does it make a difference if you're bowling Logan or not? I mean, it, it's still exciting to be there, and obviously you want to be part of the team, but does it help to know that, yeah, I'm going to get my chance eventually sometime today and, and, and things, and, and I'm going to get my shot? Yeah, I like when like other teammates do really good too, and myself. Do, do you guys, when right before somebody's bowling, do you, do you, are you cheering them on before that, or does everybody is everybody different a little bit, uh, Nick? As far as somebody get offered the encouragement, some this bowler likes to be offered encouragement. This one maybe doesn't want to be offered any encouragement. Is is everybody different kind of that way, Nick? Uh, everyone's different, but. No matter who it is, no matter who's bowling, we all try to give them encouragement and try to let them relax and just throw the best shot that they can. Is, is there a lot of like? There's no cheering before the the shots, right? It's more it's more after when when things happen. So uh, when you guys are bowling as a team, you only get to bowl a couple of frames and and, and the whole thing on. Is it tough to when you're not consistently going out there frame after frame? Does is it difficult to stay focused and do the things that you need to do? It is very difficult to stay focused, especially when it's that many people there. It's hard to focus, and it's kind of embarrassing if you throw a gutter ball or you miss your mark or whatever you do. So, yeah. Guys, I appreciate your guys' time. We wish you best of luck here uh, in, in the next few minutes. I think things get started at 10 a.m., is that correct? Yep. 10 a.m. on Saturday and goes all day just on Saturday, or is it a Saturday-Sunday tournament? Just Saturday. Just Saturday. Just so, Saturday. And, uh, and a few minutes. So as people listen to this, they'll be uh, getting the uh, getting this thing started. And then, uh, guys, I, I congratulate you on a great season and wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Members of the Bronco Bowling Team, we'll take a break and we'll come back with more coaches' corner. You're listening on K104 and online at rjbroadcasting.com. And welcome back to Coach's Corner for our final segment here this morning. As, uh, it's Almost time to get the day into full swing as uh, we approach the 10 o'clock hour. Let's talk about the week that was. Members of the Bronco Bowling Team last Saturday, they were down in uh, the cities for the state all-conference meet, which uh, involved four Bronco uh, bowlers, Nick Tanner, Sammy Maxwell, Owen Amundsen, and Owen Worley were in the top six in the North Central Conference, which allowed them to go to that meet last week. They teamed up with two other bowlers from Hibbing. They went one and six in their seven matches, some of them very, very close. Uh, unfortunately, things did not go as well as they uh, wanted them to go uh, last Saturday. Hopefully, things go much, much better today for them as the whole team down at the uh, state bowling meet that gets started in uh, just about 12 minutes. No action on Sunday or Monday, but two Tuesday, the uh, Bronco Boys hockey team, they were at home against Lake of the Woods. They lose by a final score of 2 to nothing as Jake Klaus stopped 32 of 34 shots. The Broncos did outshoot the Bears 36 to 34, but as I talked to somebody uh, yesterday, uh, they talked, I think it was to uh, Evan Omdahl on the girls' hockey game last night. He said it was like there was a big bullseye on the uh, – <laughs> Bears goaltender and uh, the Broncos were hitting it unfortunately not putting one into the net the Muskie girls hockey team was at home on Tuesday they defeated Beaver Brave 15 to 1 CCA's had four goals and a couple of assists Taylor Croswell and uh, Siobhan uh, McIntosh each had a pair of goals in that game, Jenna Clendenning had a goal and three assists. The Muskie Boys hockey team was also home against Beaver Bray in a game that was heard on K1, or excuse me, on KGHS 12:30 a.m. as they beat defeated Beaver Bray five to one. James Gushalak had a pair of goals in the third period to seal the win for the Muskies. The Little Fork Big Falls Vikings uh, basketball team, girls basketball team, opened their season with a 75-12 loss to Big Fork. I would say the Big Four Husky girls basketball team is the co-favorite with MIB to win the Section 7A. So it's a team that uh, is very good. And uh, Emily Franz led the Vikings with five points in that game on Tuesday night. 
Wednesday night, the Muskie girls hockey team took the long trip to Sioux Lookout to take on Queen Elizabeth, and they uh, won by a final score of 9 to nothing. CeCe Hayes uh, continued her uh, hot way. She had six points again on Wednesday night, two goals and four assists. Taylor Croswell and Siobhan uh, McIntosh had hat tricks after scoring a pair of goals the uh, night before, and Jenna Clendenning had a goal and three assists in that 9 nothing win. Thursday, the Morocco girls basketball team, uh, who we talked to earlier here in Coach's Corner, opened up their season and uh, got it off, started off quickly and uh, built a 45-15 halftime lead. They end up defeating Evelyn Gilbert 76-41. Grace Gilbert led the way with 20 points. Jenna Sullivan 14 and Emma Gilbert had 11. Of course, last night, in a game heard on K104 and online at rjbroadcasting.com, the uh, Muskie girls defeated the Bronco girls by a final score of 3-1. to CeCe Hayes had a couple of unassisted goals, one on the power play, one shorthanded, and uh, Kaylee uh, Degania got the other uh, goal for the Muskies. That one also was shorthanded. Morgan Rasmussen got the lone goal for the Broncos in a 6-on-4 situation with just over two minutes remaining. The Bronco boys basketball team opened their season last night. They lose 83-35 to Bemidji. Wyatt Bra excuse me, Armando Barrios had 12 points for the Broncos. Wyatt Broughton had 7. The LBF girls basketball team lost 59-18 last night to Deer River. Emily Franz and Danielle Pekarski each had 5 points. The Rainy River uh, women's and men's basketball teams were down in St. Cloud. The women lose 73-72. The men lose 98-91. And the Fort Francis Lakers and the SIJHL, they lose to Thief River Falls by a score of 7-3. What's going on again uh, locally today? I mentioned the Bronco Bowling team down in the cities taking part in the state meet there. We'll also, uh, the Rainy River basketball teams are also uh, playing again today after being in St. Cloud last night. They're in Fergus for 1 and 3 o'clock games this afternoon. The uh, Bronco wrestlers, that would be uh, Chris Berry, uh, Noel Mathis and Hudson Mann, they will be uh, in Forest, uh, in Faustin, excuse me, today for the invitation. I'll get started here at 10 a.m. And then the game that you'll hear on K104 and online at RJ Broadcasting tonight, the Bronco Boys hockey team down on the range. They'll be taking on the Virginia Blue Devils. That game gets started at 7.30. We'll start the pregame with Mike Bolstead and myself at 7.10. Monday, girls basketball team is down in uh, Chisholm to take on the Blue Streaks. The LBF girls basketball team just added this game in. This just came across the wire yesterday. They are going to be in Budette to take on Lake of the Woods on Monday. And the uh, Bronco wrestlers will be down in Nashwalk. Remember, they are in a co-op with Greenway, Nashwalk, Keewatin. Nashwalk is the host school. They'll be down in Nashwalk on Monday as they will be taking on Virginia and Proctor in a meet there on Monday. Tuesday, absolutely crazy busy day. We'll start with uh, Bronco Boys basketball. We'll have them on the air as they take on Chisholm. Pre-game to start right around 7 o'clock uh, first uh, opening tip will be at 7.15. Bronco Boys Hockey on Tuesday is at Eveleth Gilbert. Fort Francis Boys Hockey is at Dryden. Fort Francis Girls Hockey is at home against War Road. Girls Hockey is at home against Hibbing Chisholm. The Fort Francis uh, Lakers will be in Eng uh, at English River. And the Little Fort Big Falls uh, Girls Basketball Team after being in Lake of the Woods on Monday night. They'll host Nashua Kiwatin on Tuesday night. Wednesday sees the Fort Francis girls hockey team. They are at Dryden for a 7-15 game on Wednesday. Thursday, the Fort Francis boys hockey team starts a uh, tournament in Brandon, Manitoba. That tournament starts on Thursday and ends on Sunday. The Bronco boys basketball team will be home for their second game uh, of the week. They will be hosting maybe the Section 7 2A favorite in Esco. The boys swimming and diving team will have their uh, hibbing relays on Thursday. That's kind of their season opening scrimmage to get things going as they'll have their first uh, competition. The Fort Francis boys basketball and girls volleyball team will be at Beaver Bray on Thursday afternoon. The Bronco girls basketball team will be in Ely for a 7 15 game. The Viking girls will be at MIB, or excuse me, hosting MIB as they'll have their second home game of the week. And the wrestlers are supposed to be in Ogilvy for a quadrangular on Thursday. Friday, of course, the uh, Fort Francis Muskie boys hockey team continues the tournament in Brandon. We'll have Little Fork Big Falls Viking boys basketball on the air as they host Lake of the Woods on Friday night. Pre-game starts right around 6.55 in the opening tip at 7.15. Bronco boys basketball at Ely on Friday night. Boys hockey at home against Hibbing. That is the only meeting between those two teams hitting Chisholm uh, this year. That game happens at Bronco Arena at 7.30. The girls hockey team is going to be on a uh, road trip down south. They'll be at Princeton on Friday night. They'll be taking on Wilmer. 
on Saturday. The Lakers are at home against Thief River Falls again on uh, Friday night. And the Rainy River basketball teams, they'll have their first home games of the year. Women at 5.30, men at 7.30 against Anoka Ramsey. Of course, Saturday, just as busy as the rest of the week. We'll have Bronco Boys Hockey on the air next Saturday night as they take on the Proctor Rails at home at Bronco Arena. The girls' basketball team, we already mentioned their big home game against Virginia on Saturday night. Mentioned the girls' hockey game at Wilmer at 2.30 on Saturday. The Lakers will go to Thief River Falls on Saturday. Rainy River basketball home for a doubleheader. Women at 1, men at 3 against Riverland. And the Rainy River women's hockey team will be at UW Stout. So the winter season in full effect starting next week. Everybody in action. I look at my uh, schedule. There's at least six teams in action on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Get out, support these teams. Go out and uh, see what the uh, local kids are doing because what they are doing is so great. Thanks to Dave and his staff here at Hardy's for taking care of our guests this morning. The uh, Bronco girls basketball team. That was here. I want to thank the Bronco Bowling team who uh, had the uh, tape that interview earlier this week uh, on Wednesday as they're down at the state meet. Thanks to Ryan back at the station for pushing all the buttons. Thanks to our sponsors, but most of all, thank you for listening to Coach's Corner live from Hardy's on K104 and online at rjbroadcasting.com.